Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Her Story TV. This is Gertrud Mache here in beautiful Wellington, New Zealand. I am graced with yet another amazing guest coming to us all the way from the USA. Karma, welcome, welcome, welcome. Tell everybody your full name, where you're based, how old you are, and share your story with us today. Don't you know never to ask a woman how old she is? <laughs> Anyway, <laughs> my name is Karma Spence, and I'm currently based in Hastings, Minnesota, and I'm 54 years old. Share your story with us, Karma. I know you have an amazing process that you're going to bring to the conference. We're having our first online summit from the 30th of November to the 12th of December. Okay. What is the Karma Code, and how did you come upon it? Well, first of all, it follows the spelling of my name, C-A-R-M-A. -A. And I was encouraged by more than one coach to come up with a process or a system or something based on my name because my name is, well, to most people, it's rather unique. I'm the third one in my family, so it's not that unique to me. So I kind of took it for granted. But... It took me a couple of years to kind of come up with what are those five letters? What do they mean? And why would they be important? And what I finally came up with is this sort of code or keys to living. And that's creativity, authenticity, relationships, mindset, and action. And creativity was the really easy letter to come up with because I am a very creative person. I have so many outlets of my creativity. I cook and I write and I was a belly dancer for many years. And basically I've got so many ideas on how to express my creativity in my head. I couldn't possibly live long enough <laughs> to implement them all. So I often will just give ideas away because I'm just, I'm just a creative dynamo. And the authenticity came out because I think that really came out of ha my relationships in general. So that kind of ties into the, the R with those relationships. As a young person, I wanted to date guys, right? And I always felt like I needed to somehow be some not only just a best version of myself, but a version of myself that that person, that particular guy would accept, which meant I was never truly authentic. And that led me down a road of several increasingly abus abusive relationships. And after the, the last abusive relationship where the guy actually attacked me and I had a fractured orbital and he ended up in prison, I thought, okay, this is, this is enough. And I took a year off from men and dating and just worked on myself. And that's when I realized that I didn't want to go out with a guy who didn't like karma, didn't like me as I was. So after a year of figuring out who that was, because I had to unpack me because in, uh, I had a 13 year marriage that was abusive, I had kind of sought, ceased to be myself. I finally, okay, kind of had an idea and I met my, who the, the man who is my current husband. And I remember on our first date, my agenda was, I'm going to be full on karma. And if he doesn't like it, I won't go on a second date. Well, it turned out he loved full on karma and the rest is history. And, and, and it still amazes me that sometimes I still find myself apologizing for doing something that's just karma. And he's like, why are you apologizing? apologizing I love you so that's where the authenticity came from and I realized that also you need to bring that authenticity not only into your relationships but into your business as well because and and yes I mean you don't need to be TMI too much information which I am the queen of <laughs> but there needs to be the the people who come to you especially if you're a solo entrepreneur need to have a feeling that they know who you are yes. and, and that you get them and so I do my best to bring who I am to the table. And yes, that does turn around, turn off potential clients. But I've learned that I don't want those potential clients because when I've taken them, it's made my life a living hell. So 
if I'm full on me and the clients love me as I am, that's awesome. I and think so that you have touched on something that's really important there for a lot of women learning to be authentically you learning to be yes. a full expression of you. Yeah. And that's a journey. I mean, yes. I was full on karma on our first date of the karma I was then, but karma keeps evolving. Yes. Yes. And so, allow yourself to evolve. Exactly. I exactly. Love so what does the R stand for? That's relationships. Okay. And in the context of business, that just basically means you want to cultivate the relationships with your JV partners, with your subscribers, with your clients, with potential clients. And what I boil that R down to is always be your best self. Yes. You know, and that means even when you're at the grocery store. Because you never know when you're being rude to that clerk, mm -hmm. someone's out there with their smartphone going, whoo, look who I saw being rude to a clerk. I mean, it's like Ellen DeGeneres is experiencing this right now because yeah. she's like known as the kindness queen and it turns out she's not so nice behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. And that's inauthentic. So again, there, but also it's just, there's no need to be mean. You don't have to like someone to be kind to them. And kindness is one of my core values. And it's, and I'm even kind to people I don't like because I just, I kindly walk away from them, you know? But again, it's like, you don't have to like someone to be kind to them. Mm -hmm. And I'm seeing a lot of unkindness in the world right now, especially here in the in the United States because the two parties are being really really unkind to each other and people are saying very hurtful things and they don't even they know or they don't know or they don't care or they're not paying attention but they're hurting their own friends feelings yeah yeah because they're just being black or white and I think it's leading to a lot of division in this country and I think it bleeds out into other into the world because a lot of people look to the United States as sort of a, a model of freedom. And if, we're if we can't even get along with ourselves, what does that say? <laughs> that's so true. So that's the R. What does the yes. M stand for? The M stands for mindset. And I believe that you need to culture, nurture a growth mindset, which means that you look on the bright side of things whenever you can. And when, when things go crappy, and they will, I mean, hello, COVID, <laughs> you have to figure out, well, where's the blessing in this? In fact, I'm working on a book called Whale Falls, Finding the Blessings in Sorrow. Because you can find a silver lining in anything if you just look for it. Yes. And I think it's really important to cultivate gratitude and hopefulness and forgiveness and all these things that lead you toward, for the lack of a better word, God. It's, it's because when whatever you think about expands. So if you're thinking about, Ugh, this is awful. Guess what you're going to find? Get more awful. <laughs> awful. And, and that's not just woo-woo. That's not just law of attraction. That is biology. Yeah. The br we have a part of our brain that literally brings up and points out everything that, you th that it thinks you think is important. So if you were to decide that white cars were important because you just bought a new white car, guess what you see everywhere? White cars. Because. Did they suddenly multiply? Well, they've always been there. You just think they're important, so you notice them. Yes. And the same thing goes with anything. If you decide butterflies are important, guess what you're going to see? Probably even in the middle of winter, you would see butterflies. <laughs> so why not focus on what's right in your life? And even I, if I, I, I love the, this whole mindset thing because a lot of times when I work with my clients and I'm trying to help them change their mindsets, people are so focused on what they don't want. And it's exactly. as easy as just asking them, so what do you want? And in <laughs> yeah. that, you can help change somebody's vibration around the negative things that are going on in their lives. I love that. Yeah. Yeah. 
And I, I've done, again, that was part of that journey of figuring myself out and, and getting to a place where I was open to a better relationship in my life, was studying universal laws and law of attraction, and even understanding domestic violence. Yes. So that I could see the warning signs, because when I, when I read the little list of warning signs, I'm like, holy cow, my first husband had them right there before we ever got married. They were there. I just didn't, I just didn't know. Yeah. So, well, sometimes yeah. women do see the signs and think they can change someone or it's going to get better. And then you find yourself yeah. in the light. Yeah, that doesn't work. Our intuition does tell us we are graced with this gift of intuition. Most women are very, very intuitive. Yeah. And oh, out of 10. After three years of that first marriage, I was thinking of divorce. Oh. I gave him an extra 10 years just, you know. <laughs> Just make sure I was right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the comma code. Now we're at A. And this one is probably the most important because the other four won't happen if you don't take action. Yes. And, and, and a lot of people, especially in the law of attraction world, tend to forget that aspect of getting the things you want in life. Yes, if you think about it, it will expand. I mean, if you're focused on what you want, opportunities will show up, but they don't plop in your lap. You have to like, they get, you notice them and then you have to go after them. You have to take the actions you need. And even if you don't see them yet, you need to take actions that will move you in the direction of your goals. Because sitting around waiting for the world to hand you what you want on a silver platter is kind of like being in the movie, The Field of Dreams. If you build it, they will come. That's, that's a movie. <laughs> that's not true. If you build it, they don't necessarily come. So you need to take action. And action works in all these. You need to cultivate your creativity. You need to honor your authenticity. You need to be kind and cultivate the relationships in your life. And you need to work on your mindset, saying thank you, but no thank you to the things you don't want and saying yes to the things you do. Those are all actions. Life is a verb. And so that's, that's the karma code. I love it. And, and action is really even just taking the first step towards the door, just physically getting up and walking. A lot of people become inactive because they try and figure out the full picture of what they're trying to create or the change they're trying to implement. And it could be as simple as just getting a notebook and a pen and pen and writing down a plan, even if you don't have the money to bring something into fruition. I exactly. Love. So you'll be running around moving. Just move. You're not a tree. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so you're going to be running a workshop during the Her Story Online Summit. Tell us a little bit about what you will cover, what people can expect in that. This is the one hour workshop? Yes. Um, in that one, I'm going to be helping people outline a nonfiction book. Okay. And, and basically taking the first step in the authoring 101, authoring path. An authoring, which is the word I came up with. In fact, I literally dreamt it. I woke up thinking authoring, authoring. I'm like, where's that word come from? So I looked it up. No one said it. It just came out of my head. So I, I'm, I'm taking it as a divine di download. And the way I define an authoring is someone who engineers their author platform, their author business, their author Ness. That means, again, action, verbs, you outline your book, you include all your marketing in your book outline and your book plan so that before you even write a word, you know exactly where you're going and what you need to include in that book so that your plan can work. And so I'm going to be walking people through that first step of like creating that, that initial outline game plan so that they have a book that does what they want it to do because I've written lots of books that did something I wanted it to do, but didn't, I didn't do this process all the way through for my first few books. Yeah. And so they never quite did exactly what I had hoped for them because I came up with a lot of the ideas after the book was written and then, then it's too late. 
Okay, okay. That's awesome. So my last two questions for you is if time was an illusion and your past, your present, your future existed in the same timeline and you could go back and have a conversation with your younger self based on what life has taught you, what three nuggets of wisdom would you tell her, the younger you? One, be yourself. And when people don't like you, that's okay. They're not your people. Don't worry about all those people who make fun of you because they're just not your people. You will find your people, honor who you are. Awesome. Two, <laughs> follow your intuition. If your intuition tells you not to walk out into the street, a car may hit you. Guess what? You'll probably get hit by a car, so don't do it. And even if it looks like there's no cars coming, just give it a good 15, 20 minutes before you walk across that street. And uh, I guess the third one would be love yourself. Mm. There's enough unpleasantness in the world. Just love yourself, your foibles, your, mis your in your uh, miss, uh, what's it? imperfections, that's the word I'm looking, your imperfections, because they're part of what make you you. Yeah. And I know it's going to be hard. I mean, I still struggle with loving this scar on my face and what has happened to my face since I got hit by a car. <laughs> it's not the face I grew up with. It's not the face that I gotten used to. And I look in the mirror every day and I'm like, <laughs> but I had to grow to love it anyway. And sometimes that's a work in progress and be okay. Be kind to yourself when you have your bad days. Fantastic. Kama, it's been such a pleasure talking to you this morning. Thank you for sharing your nuggets of wisdom with us. We look forward to seeing you at the Her Story Summit, end of November, beginning of December. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And thank you, everybody, for tuning in. I will be back again with yet another amazing guest. Have a fantastic day wherever you are in the world. Thank you, Kama. Bye. Welcome. Glad to be here. <laughs> Bye. Bye.